What is up guys, it's Head House Modern Warfare here, Gamertab Banter Chicken, and welcome back to another PC tutorial. So, got a basic thing, just how to install a virtual machine. So, how to install virtual machine, simple as that. Um, a lot of people have been requesting it because I have used virtual machines in quite a few of my videos, like the one on removing rats and how to access admin accounts at work, college, school, method one, method two, uh, probably a couple of other videos as well. In the past, I have used virtual machine software and simply because it's sometimes easier to record if you want to record the startup process of a computer um, or the BIOS or something like that then doing it in a virtual machine is good because you can record on your physical machine and record the virtual machine rather than having to use a physical capture card um, and it's just good for anything really I mean, for testing out a program that you've developed in different operating systems um, just if you want to just screw around with a compute with the computer without damaging it, you can do that on a virtual machine. It won't cause any damage to your real machine. So, for people who don't know what a virtual machine is, I, this is li literally just an install um, video, not something on you know how the ins and outs of it work. But essentially, it just creates a virtual computer, just like you have a physical computer you install an operating system on. Uh, the virtual machine software creates a virtual computer which you can install an operating system on and run the operating system as if it was running on a, on a real computer. So there's different software you can use for this. You can use, I believe there's something built into Windows 8.1, maybe Windows 8 as well. I'm not entirely sure. I'll put, I think it's called Hypervisor, but I could be wrong. Um, so I'll put the real name. If it isn't Hypervisor, I'll put, put it up on screen what it is called um, over the video right now. So there's that, that comes free, I believe, with Windows 8.1, possibly Windows 8, not sure. Um, there's VMware Workstation, which is a, another Microsoft one, uh, but that is a paid-for uh, virtual machine software. You can get a 30-day trial of that, and after that you have to pay if you want to keep on using it. Or there's Oracle VM VirtualBox. So Oracle VirtualBox, that is the one that I use. It works on Windows, it works on Mac, works on Linux. Um, and it's just completely free and I prefer it to VMware Workstation anyway but I've not tried the one that comes with Windows 8.1 so their website is uh, virtualbox.org you can click on downloads download for Windows, Mac, Linux whichever you want uh, so we just download the Windows host it's literally just an installer so just download, install, click next until it is installed and then you should have a icon on the desktop so double click the icon on the desktop and this is our little software here. So what we're going to do is click on new to create a new virtual machine. And it's first going to ask us for the name of the virtual machine. So we're just going to call this Windows 7. I'm just installing Windows 7. And it will say type, so it's Microsoft Windows. If you have Linux, you would select Linux, you know, Mac OS X. So this is Microsoft Windows. We can select the whether we want a 32-bit or a 64-bit version of Windows, I'm going to select 64. If you have more than 2 gigabytes of RAM in your system, then go for the 64-bit. Click Next. Um, bear in mind, that is not... Um, the operating system themselves are not... do not come with this software. Uh, you're just selecting the type of operating system you're planning to load onto the machine. It does not come with, win with all those operating systems that were listed there before. So next, memory size. How much RAM do we want to dedicate to our virtual machine? Um, so we've got a slide bar here. We can select how much RAM. So I, I have a total of 16 gigabytes of RAM in my system. So I'm going to dedicate half of that to the virtual machine. So that's about 8 gigs. So just roughly go to 8192. So that's roughly 8 gigabytes of RAM. So if you have 8 gigabytes of RAM in your system altogether, then maybe dedicate 4 gigabytes to the virtual machine, so half of your RAM. Uh, click Next. And it's going to say, do you want to create a virtual hard drive now? So yeah, say yeah, you want to create a virtual hard drive. We're going to select Virtual Hard Disk, VHD. We're going to select Dynamically Allocated. So you could do a fixed size or Dynamically Allocated. So it says here, dynamically allocated hard drive file will only use space on your physical hard drive as it fills up. So as you're using the space on the virtual machine, um, it will only use that space on the physical hard disk. So as, we, as you put more and more files on, it will increase the amount of space. 
for the virtual machine. Uh, if you collect, if you select a fixed size, it will take a certain chunk out of your hard drive and dedicate that specific chunk of data for your virtual machine. So we're just going to select dynamically allocated simply because it's faster. <laughs> we don't know if you select fixed size, it has to uh, get all that data chunk out and format it or whatever it does. So it takes a while. So we're just going to say dynamically allocated. Uh, Windows 7 is going to be our virtual hard disk. We can select a location. I'm going to select my 4TB hard drive and I'll just put it in virtual drives. Uh, next we say how much space do we want to dedicate to the system. So I could go all the way up to 2 terabytes, but I do not want to put a lot of space on this virtual hard disk. Um, because I'm not going to be using the virtual machine to store loads of files so I'm just going to go with you know around about 25 ish gigabytes 26 gigabytes yeah so I'm going to go about 20 sorry I was on megabytes before I'm going to go about 25 gigabytes and create 8 and it's now done this now if you run this it's not going to work as you can see it does nothing it runs it here it's doing nothing whatsoever can't boot into the hard drive it can't boot into an operating system because there is no operating system loaded on there right now. So what you're going to want to do first of all is click on settings and we're going to change a couple of things in here. So if we go to advanced, uh, you can shared clipboard is a good idea. Um, it allows you to copy and paste text from your real machine to your virtual machine and from your virtual machine to your real machine if you select bi-directional or you can just do maybe physical to virtual or just virtual to physical so that's handy if you want to enable that drag and drop that does not work for me for some reason um, maybe it'll work for you but for some reason drag and drop files and stuff does not seem to work for me anyway um, so that's a handy thing you can enable if you go down to system you will have processors so you can give more cores dedicate more of your processing cores to the virtual machine. I only have a quad core CPU, so I have four cores in my CPU. So I can dedicate maybe two of them to the virtual machine. Um, but right now I'm just gonna leave it on one. If you have maybe like an eight core CPU, then you could dedicate two, maybe three cores to the virtual machine to speed it up a bit. Acceleration, so you can enable, uh, in fact, that's not the acceleration I was looking for. If you click on display, I was looking for the video memory. So if you have a gaming PC, then you can turn this right up to the top. You can enable 3D and 2D acceleration, go all the way up to 256 megabytes, which is a quarter of a gig of video RAM. If you're just doing this on a home PC, I would not recommend uh, changing this. So just leave it as what it was on by default. Um, but if you have like a gaming PC where you have a, a graphics card, then and a graphics card that is at least maybe half a gig, then you can turn this up to maximum. You can even increase the monitor count if you want multiple displays. Um, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, now we come down to storage. Now this is the important part. So in here, we need to actually mount an ISO image. So an operating system that we can load up. So we can actually get this virtual machine to work. Uh, we need an operating system. So you can get the operating system. Say you want, win uh, say you wanted a version of Windows then you could possibly download it from Windows themselves, the actual website. I'll see if we can actually download Windows 7 ISO. Uh, Windows 7 Ultimate Free Download ISO. So we could possibly download it from here, 32-bit 64. Uh, you could just look around. I'm wondering if Microsoft actually offer the ISO download on their website. It sounds dodgy because you're downloading the ISO. Most people would probably get them from torrent sites like the Pirate Bay or torrents dot whatever. Um, that is actually fine. There's no problem with downloading the ISO as a torrent as long as it's not a cracked version because it will just be you're just downloading the ISO in which you get a 30 day free trial of Windows and then you'll have to activate it with a legit product key anyway. Um, and because we're just doing it on a virtual machine, I don't see the harm in it. So yeah, I have already gone and downloaded a Windows 7 ISO. 
So I'm going to click here, empty. You, if you have an actual operating system CD or DVD, you can put that in your system and you will select your, your DVD drive. So you can choose your, your actual DVD drive, like if I selected host drive D, which is my disk drive in my computer, I could select that and then I could put in a operating system CD and when I boot it up it will start installing from the CD. But it's better to do an ISO image because you it will install a lot faster from an ISO. So I have Windows 7 Ultimate here. You just click choose virtual CD or disk drive. It will, allow, it will allow you to go ahead and browse. In fact, we might actually we might just install Windows 8 in fact because it'll be a bit different because I already have Windows 7 running on my main system so it'll be cool to show you what Windows 8 is like in a virtual machine and how it differs so yeah we'll go ahead and install Windows 8 so we select Windows 8 click OK when it loads up here and we can then go ahead and click start so I've already selected Windows 7 so to change that I can just go to settings and change this from Windows 7 to Windows 8 64 bit and click start and now what should happen is it should start loading the, the actual operating system as we can see here we've got our Windows 8 boot screen I'll full screen this for you and we can see it's starting to load up now I'm probably going to fast forward most of this installation process because it's literally just installing an operating system but you can see I'm setting up Windows 8 in this little virtual environment here so uh, looks like we'll need a product key for this so I'll definitely skip past this yep it's valid so accept license terms click next uh, we're going to go for a custom Windows installation now we have our drive that we created, our virtual hard disk, that's our 25 gigabytes, that's what we'll select to install. And it'll start copying the Windows files. Well, this will take a while, so I will go ahead and fast forward. So here we are, guys. We have got the operating system installed. We can see we've got Windows 8 on here. We can scroll along, we can go into the desktop. We've got our Windows 8 desktop. Now, one problem or one thing you may have noticed is it's in this tiny little window right here and it's a bit laggy and I wouldn't say it's particularly slow but you can see by the mouse movements how it kind of how it's kind of jumping along as if the graphic as if there's no graphics drivers it's like when you install an operating system for the first time on your real computer and you get you get it in a really uh, zoomed in screen and you know really laggy because you need to install your your video card drivers or your, your graphics drivers so one good thing about Oracle VirtualBox is if we go up to devices at the top left here and we scroll down and we click on insert guest edition CD image and it may come up straight on your screen but if it doesn't then you'll need to go into uh, your disk drives so we go into computer and instead of the operating system we now have CD virtual guest editions if you double click on this so I think 64 would be 64 bit and 86 would be 86 if I just run the guest editions click yes click on next uh, just install to the default location direct 3d support uh, direct 3d support and guest editions install and I believe what this does, and I could be wrong, but I believe it kind of takes the graphics drivers from your main, your actual physical computer and uses them on the virtual machine in some way. Uh, so if we click tr always trust from Oracle Virtual Corporation, we should be able to skip past all of those message boxes and just let it install. So we can see there it's flickering and the mouse is already a bit smoother. Now I'll ask you to reboot so just click finish and let it reboot. So as you can see it has now blown up into a larger size and it's no longer lagging anymore. I can click on here, I can go on documents, music, pictures, computer. It doesn't lag anymore, it's a lot faster, more responsive. 
Another thing you can do once you've got the guest editions installed is blow it up into full screen mode. To do this you hold down the control key and I believe it has to be the right control key, not the one on the left, and then press F on the keyboard and that blows it up into full screen as you can see here. Um, you can see it is a lot uh, larger. Um, slight problem with this though with me is that it's not putting it into it's kind of zoomed in a bit too much as you can see my taskbar is cut off a bit here this probably will not happen for you it's just I've had a problem with full screen um, with my virtual machines for quite a while um, when you it used to crash when I uh, when I went into full screen but I've kind of fixed fixed it from crashing but it's still not quite right but when you are actually uh, wanting to record you can blow it up into full screen here and it will just look like you're on your main computer even people probably won't be able to tell the difference and if I hit the start key on my keyboard you can see it uses the start menu in the virtual machine um, if you press the left start key it'll do the same so you have to come out of uh, full screen mode if you want to use your main computer or, or if you've got dual screens like I do, I can just move my mouse into my other screen and click and then I get my taskbar from my, my physical machine showing up here. And then I can just hold down control and press F again to exit out of full screen mode. And yeah, that is basically it. So thank you guys for watching. Go ahead, subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Comment if you have any questions. Like the video if you liked it. And I will see you guys next time.